Um, we're going to start with Tom Caker. Chris, how you doing, bud? Good to see Good, you. How are you? Good. Um, you went through this last year. You kind of know what this process is like. What kind of an advantage does it give you this time around, knowing, you know, kind of the the memories of of last year? Yeah, it's definitely um, familiar territory for me. Just going through that last year, I obviously learned a lot and um, be able to kind of follow Keegan through this process helped a lot too. So this year, I know that. Um, there's just one goal in mind, and it's to be able to get drafted this year. So um, I try to work hard every single day, just try to make it um, a really tough two months for me because I know I can get better from it. Cannington. Hey, Chris, appreciate you taking the time to speak with us. When you look back at your past year at Iowa, what were some things that you were proud of in terms of the advancement of your game, and why did you feel like now was the time to enter the draft? Yeah, I feel like um, this year I was able to show just a lot of different things in my game, just that I can be able to kind of take over games, kind of lead our team in different ways, whether it be offensively, making a play defensively, um, or just making the right play. So I think that's came a long way. My, um, my confidence, obviously, has gotten a lot better this year. Um, just be able to work through my mistakes and knowing that coach trusted me to play through my mistakes and wouldn't take me out. So. Um, that helped a lot, just knowing that everyone had my back this year and was riding for me. So um, as confidence was on, honestly the biggest thing as to why I had success this year. Chad? Hey, Chris, how you doing? Good. Uh, I know, you know, you don't want to talk about injuries during the season, but how, like did, did the foot injury that you suffered in December, did that slow you down? Did you feel like in any way or how did you feel like you bounced back for that? Obviously, you you play a lot of minutes, you know, January through March. Yeah, um, I honestly think it took me a little bit to get, to get like ready and get my um, rhythm back from that because I was sitting out for a little while, um, just get my game rhythm back. Um, but it didn't really affect me towards the end of the season at all. Um, there's obviously fatigue you get with um, a five, six month long season like you have in college and um, that things up playing part, but there's no excuses at all to how how I was at the end of the season. Um, but no, I don't think it really affected me. Owen? Hey, Chris, appreciate your time today. Um, you mentioned a little bit in uh, your response to Tom's question earlier, but can you speak a little bit about how much maybe Keegan's success with the Kings this year um, helped inform your decision a little bit, or um, has he helped you a lot in making this decision to enter the league this year? Um, yeah, I kind of knew this year was kind of going to be my last year um, and that I was going to en eventually enter into the NBA draft. But um, Keegan told me a lot, just uh, just seeing how he's been playing, just hearing him tell me stories, just things that he's learned throughout the season has obviously helped me. Um, going through this process last year with him helped a lot. And being able to watch him get drafted and go through summer league, uh, training camp and all those things. Um, so he's he's definitely helped me a lot going into this process again and throughout the season. Mike? Hi, Chris. Um, hey. What from your pre-draft experience last year uh, do you know that's going to help you in the next two months? And uh, just in general, uh, from, from Keegan's experience and from your observations and knowledge, what do you know about the NBA that maybe you didn't know a year ago? Um, yeah, so I think for your first question, um, just last year I was kind of up in the air about what I was going to do, come back or stay in the draft. But this year I have one goal set in mind. Um, so I know kind of what it takes to uh, prepare yourself for that moment to be able to play, to get drafted, play into the summer league. So it definitely helped a lot last year. And then um, sorry. what was the second question again? Uh, just what do you know about the NBA? now that maybe you didn't know a year ago just from from your brother's experience and from you know what what you've learned on your own gotcha um yeah i would say the biggest thing is just identifying your role early um keen was really able to do that with the kings and kind of carve out his role on that team and um, be a professional in that role i think the way he's carried himself the last um the year ever since he's been a professional has been really admirable for him just because um, he treats it 
like a job, a job that he has fun with and is excited to go to every single day. So I think that's kind of where I learned a lot about it. Um, uh, I know I know I have the skill set to be able to play in the NBA. Um, it's really the mindset that you got to bring it every single time because um, in reality, like people are fighting for their jobs, fighting for position, just fighting for success in their lives. Blake? Hey, Chris. Um, get, oh, you know, not too many Hawkeyes have really been in the NBA historically. You're going to be one of a few. What does it mean to, I guess, represent the state and the university in the NBA? Yeah, it means a lot, um, especially being a Hawkeye. That's something I've always dreamed about being my whole entire life growing up in Cedar Rapids. And I mean, honestly, like after my senior year, I didn't know if I would play college basketball. Um, didn't really have many looks, many opportunities after that. Um, so just to be able to have this opportunity is really cool. Back to Tom. Uh, one of the things that happened last week, Chris, was you were um, one of the co-winners of the Chris Street Award. You're named after Chris Street. What did that moment mean to you to get that award from Mike and Patty? Uh, it meant a lot. Um, just kind of growing up and my namesake and why I was named after Chris and um, just the story behind it with everything that came out this year with the documentary um, Mike and Patty coming to a lot of our games it was really special and they were there um, to be able to see that and we were sent at the same table and it was really cool um, my parents were getting really teary-eyed uh, Mike and Patty a little bit and it was really just a special moment between our families uh, back to Kennington Yeah, as far as just the uh, pre-draft process, where are you at? Have you started working out? Are you kind of cra crafting a game plan for yourself? And what are you hoping to accomplish, maybe body composition-wise or skill-wise, before the combine? Yeah, um, just kind of re refining my skill set. I've been working out for the last couple of weeks and um, just kind of get very different facets of my game that I need to work on. And um, obviously, I'm going to... Um, try to gain on strength for the NBA. That's obviously a big factor. So physical game, as you've kind of seen in these playoffs, um, you're going to, you're going to weigh with a lot and just going to Sacramento and seeing that firsthand was really cool, but I'm um, no, I'm just working, um, working out until the draft just kind of just getting better every day. That's just my goal. Just one day at a time. Jack. Yeah, I mean, taking the time. Oh, you said Chad, not Jack. No, I said Jack. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Chad. Uh, Chris, thanks for taking the time. You, you've had a lot of uh, transition periods in your basketball life, going from Prairie uh, down to Florida to DME, and then going from uh, high school to Iowa, then Iowa to the NBA, and then back to Iowa. How have all those transition periods helped you? And, and could you characterize this one, changing your game from going from a team game at Iowa and in the Big Ten to a very individual game, trying to hone your own craft? Yeah, I think definitely uh, moving around a lot and just having different types of scenery um, will kind of help me um, in this process and on to next year, wherever I'm fortunate enough to play at. But um, yeah, I'm definitely taking this time period to just redefine my skill set, um, just take a step back and just reevaluate re my game and just see how I can get better. Um, so it's definitely going to be a fun process, a challenging process that um, I've been looking forward to. All right, Chad. Yeah, all good. Uh, you, I know you came back wanting to be a first rounder. Do you feel like the information you're receiving, um, you've played yourself into that area based on the feedback you've had? And uh, like, where what is kind of your goal to to where you want to get picked? Yeah, I think for me, it's um, first round was obviously the goal coming back, and I think I I played myself into into that, and um, I just want to go to a team that just fits me the best on and off the court. Um, I'll know more of kind of what that entails, like more, the more I go through this process. But um, I think definitely coming back, that was my goal. I wanted to have team success first, just be able to have a year back at Iowa, um, get better, be able to play in front of our awesome fans one last time. And um, I think it was definitely a special year uh, for myself and our team, just kind of the, the things that we went through and overcame adversity. Shannon. Hey, Chris. Hi. So 
you talk about those workouts and that you've been working out, but have you been doing anything differently? And then are you getting any hints from any teams so far? Um, I've been just taking these workouts. Um, they're, they're tough. We go multiple times a day and, um, I'm putting more stress on my body probably than I did last year, just because, um, it's going to take a lot to be able to play on the NBA and, um, we're just getting ready for that right now. And, um, with NBA teams, uh, probably I haven't talked to me. We'll see like towards the combine, um, probably that'll entail a little bit more. Thank you. Mike. Um, Chris, you, a couple of times now you've mentioned redefining your skill set. What does that mean? Yeah, just sharpening everything up. Um, my ball handling, my catch and shoot. Um, that's a big thing, just catch and shooting, just be able to read defenders on the fly. Um, just kind of take a step back, see kind of what the things I could get better at just little by little every single day. And it's it takes a, com a complete game to be able to play in the NBA. And have success. So that's kind of what I've been doing is just training like an NBA player. And do you expect to go through the entire combine process? Uh, we'll see. Um, still have to decide what I'm doing for that. Might do it all. We'll see. Thank you. And Chad, last question here. Oh man, a lot of pressure. Uh, I was going to ask about the, you know, like when you go to all these teams, you're going to get comparison questions to your brother I know you're used to that what would yeah. your answer be in terms of like how your game you feel like your game will be different at the next level than his if at all yeah I just think um towards the end of the season I kind of showed that I could be a, a little bit more of a playmaker um I know that I can be uh, whether it be coming off ball screens uh making a play for others just doing different things like that so I think that's definitely a difference between us um, Kean's a uh, really good catch and shoot shooter. He, he's been playing his role really well this year, but I think I can bring just that different element to an NBA team.